this is the LaRose Bros. And today, we are going to show you how to prepare for squidding season. We're going to be giving you a checklist of things you need to uh, prepare for, have, and do uh, before you go squidding, because squidding season is just around the corner, and we're really excited to uh, go back out there and get some squid. Yeah, we're super excited that squidding season is so close, and we're going to be showing you everything that you need to have before the squidding season and give you some tips as well on catching the squid. So the first thing on our checklist uh, is lures. You have to uh, be prepared with some squidding jigs uh, to be able to catch the squid, obviously. And uh, these are, is just, this is just a variety of some of the lures, uh, some of the squid jigs that people use uh, to catch squid. This one? is a uh, basic lure squid jig and um, it as you can see the squid jigs have tons and tons of little hooks on the bottom that's what will snag onto the squid and um, these actually all pretty much all squid jigs are glow in the dark and that's what attracts them so you want to have a variety of colors and kinds because we have different kinds like this fish one and um, even more yeah, there's a ton of different jigs out there. Usually they'll take uh, any. Uh, early in the season, they can be a little bit more picky. So you need to have some different uh, colors because they are uh, color sensitive. So they'll go after uh, different colors of jigs more than others on certain nights for whatever reason. And here's a uh, setup we have. You can see right here, this uh, is a double jig. This one, this jig is weightless so it will float but this one is weighted so it kind of pulls down this one and this is a really good setup uh, when going for squid it has worked for us uh, lots of times you can also put one of these weightless jigs on the top instead of uh, the little one on certain days these uh, small fish uh, shaped jigs can be uh, really helpful when catching squid. What we found to catch the most squid for us is these um, normal kinds. We um, have lots of colors. This one is golden and pink. Squid tend to like pink a lot for whatever reason. Green can also be pretty good. And as you saw on this, um, we have two different colors here. So whenever you go out squidding, make sure that you have um, plenty of different colors of jigs because you want to find out what kind of color is best for the time you are um, squinting. So you need to have pink and green and blue are some musts. They always love pink. Green works pretty well. And sometimes blue can also be the one that they're mainly after. So you want to make sure you have a variety of colors and um, some weightless ones. Here is uh, a pole set up with some with a uh, rig we have this weightless glow in the dark uh, marker so you can see where your line is in the water and it'll just travel up and down your line depending on how deep uh, your line is and this is our recommended setup we got a pink jig and a green jig and we also have this marker so yeah. this is uh, probably one of the best uh, setups uh, we have you can use the cork to tell where you are and so that you're not snagging other people's lines because on the pier, people tend to crowd a whole lot. So this is really helpful when you're there. And um, so this is just our setup. It, it works really well every time we go squidding. Um, if we use something like this, we pretty much always catch squid. It's really nice. And this cork also helps you tell where you are in a crowded area. The second item on our checklist is lights. You'll need two kinds of lights when squidding. And the first kind is sunlight to charge your squid jigs. This is a black light. It is super efficient and fast. You only need to hold this on for, to your squid jigs for like 20 seconds and then they'll be fully charged. So make sure to do that um, every once in a while while you're squidding. You can also use normal LED lights, but black lights charge squid jigs way faster. Uh, the brighter the light uh, also charges it. So if you, have, if you have a really bright flashlight, that could also work but black lights just get the job done really fast. If you don't have a black light or a bright flashlight, you can also put them out in the sun to charge. And the second type of light uh, is some light to attract the squid. Uh, if you've ever gone squidding before, you've probably seen uh, people bring generators 
to charge big spotlights that they'll point down in the water to attract the squid because squid are attracted to light. That's one of the main reasons why people fish at night with glow-in-the-dark jigs. But we found that you don't need a big light to uh, attract the squid. Uh, in fact, this light, uh, we've used it multiple times. So uh, this light will pretty much light up the top 10 feet of the water. Turn it on and you can see it doesn't look that bright uh, in the daytime but at night it uh, does a lot uh, and attracts the squid uh, very well. Uh, electric light works fine. If you don't have a light you can always find somebody who does and fish near them and um, if you do make sure to bring rope and a carabiner um, or something like that to fasten it to the side of the pier you'll want to fish on the outside of your light. So that brings up another important point. Uh, squid, are, even though they're attracted to the light, they don't uh, stay in the middle of the light. They'll stay kind of on the outside because their prey, they like seeing their prey lit up so they can see their prey uh, at night. So that's the main reason why they're attracted to light is so they can see fish like shiners that school make big schools or herring so they can uh, ambush their prey. So the final item on the preparation checklist for squidding is location. Make sure to identify a few different fishing piers that you can go to to do some squidding. Um, we have a few different places that we usually go to. Our main place that we go to for squidding is Edmonds Pier and another place is Shiosho Bay. So um, they're pretty close to us here and um, Edmonds Pier tends to be a great spot for squidding. Yeah, there tends to be quite a few people there, uh, but there's more than enough squid for everyone uh, at the pier, and you just have to tolerate the crowd, uh, find good spots, uh, get there a couple hours before sunset. Edmonds Pier, uh, it's a pretty, big, a pretty big pier, and there's a lot of squid there that hang around that area, uh, usually uh, from September to January, February. And another fishing location that you can go to is Shoshul Bay. Shoshul Bay is a smaller pier than Edmonds and it's actually um, right behind a jetty. Shoshul Bay tends to be a little less crowded than Edmonds Pier and you can usually find a spot easily to do squidding there. Um, even though it's right behind a jetty, the squid are as big as they are at Edmonds Pier and you can go there to catch them as well. Sometimes you might not get as many though as Edmonds Pier, but there are some great squid there that you can catch if Edmonds Pier is just too crowded for you. Another pier you can go to is Les Davis. Uh, it's in the Tacoma area, so if you live near there, that's a pretty good pier to go to. Uh, it doesn't have as much squid as Edmonds Pier, but it also doesn't have as many people uh, that go there every day. So it's less crowded, but also there's not as many squid. Another place you can go to is downtown Seattle. Really fun if you go there because you can enjoy the sights of downtown Seattle while you're fishing. Finally, we're going to discuss a few fishing tips that you can use while doing your squinting. Yeah, so one of the main things you have to keep in mind while you're squinting is that people, especially at Edmonds Pier, will try to steal your spot. Make sure you have uh, it's all your stuff surrounding you so people don't try to steal your spot. One time I even was putting away a squid in our cooler and then when I came back to keep squidding somebody was there. So watch out for those spot stealers on the pier. Make sure you have your stuff surrounding you. Also, we've said this before, but a good way to attract the squid is to cast out uh, just past from a spotlight uh, in the water and slowly jig your uh, lure uh, into the light. Uh, getting your timing right between each jig is very important uh, when catching squid. So keep that in mind and always be looking at the people around you uh, and try to copy uh, what they're doing if you uh, are new to squidding. I jig every five to three seconds. Um, it usually works really well for me and um, you you can jig um, Maybe wait five seconds, jig, wait three seconds. It's what I usually do, and um, we usually catch a lot of squid that way, so you will be feeling them as you're jigging if they're um, attaching. Another tip is if you're not catching many squid, you may want to consider your depth. Squid um, can be very close to the surface 
or low down on the bottom or somewhere in the middle. It's hard to tell usually, but if you um, go from the bottom and jig your way up, usually when you're not catching many squid, it's a problem of your depth. So the final thing we recommend to bring is something to keep the squid in, uh, whether it's a small pail or a big cooler, uh, depending on how many squid you think you're going to catch or how many people are with you. One of the most uh, helpful types of containers is one with something that can drain, like if it's a slotted basket or a pail, even if you just put some holes inside of an old cooler, uh, so the water drains out and all the ink that the squid are squirting drains out. So when you're reeling in a squid, you will a lot of times notice them squirting ink everywhere as you're reeling them up. And they will keep doing that as they're in the cooler. And there will be ink everywhere. So if you are tired of the ink getting on your cooler, or if you are worried about that, you can also prepare to counter that by either putting holes in an old um, cooler or a bucket, or buying a basket or some sort of container that has holes in the bottom to drain out the ink. Also we're planning on putting some links uh, in the description. Uh, check down there. There's going to be uh, some different links to some videos showing you uh, how to catch different squid, how to cook them, and just uh, showing us in action. Uh, we really like squidding. We've had, we have quite a few videos uh, out there. Uh, multiple different recipes that you can follow. So we'll put those in the description and make sure to check those out. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to prepare for squidding season. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, make sure to like and subscribe. And make sure to um, follow this checklist and try to um, get everything you need for the squidding season. It's coming soon. And also look out for some videos. We'll be doing squidding as well. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.